Hey everyone, just in the plant room right now. Those seeds have been germinating for three days plus growing for probably about another three or four days after that. So they're a good size, but let's see how we got here. So as you can see, these have been germinating for about four or five days. Nice and even distribution. Maybe the lights hit a bit more there, but otherwise, pretty good. We're only one day out from harvest now, so not too long. So how did we get here? Well, after three days of germination, the top weighted trays came off, all the immature sprouts, but underneath the lights, as you can see right here. I'm actually gonna shut this fan off because I don't wanna talk over the fan. We'll get to that later. So going underneath the lights, that gets me to my first thing I wanna talk about. Lighting, what do you do? Well, lighting can be as cheap or as expensive as you want. It can literally be the sunshine or buying expensive LED lights. If you have a south facing window that gets about eight hours of sunlight in a day, just put your tray in front of there, they'll grow fine, no worries. If you're like me and you don't have that kind of luxury, then the best way to start is by grabbing this, yeah, I have it in here. Yeah, right here. A light just like this has a little stand, has a little 24 watt bulb in the bottom right there. All you do is plug it into a regular outlet, tray goes underneath, and it's simple. When I bought that originally, it was about $50. But now, probably because of inflation, it's about 60. But still, it's a great way to start off if you don't have a lot of money and you just want to grow one tray of microgreens for yourself each week. Now, it can go as high as buying mix. Hey, if you like that tip on how to grow your own microgreens at home for lighting using this bad boy, Go ahead and subscribe to get more great content just like that. Expensive LED lights that are gonna cost you like hundreds of dollars just for one set. For myself, I went middle of the road, bought two sets of these Barina 48 watt LED light bulbs just off of Amazon, and they work great. They have a two year warranty. Are they as good as like the high end stuff? No, nope, not really. But do they do the job? Yeah, definitely. I do microgreens and all my plant starts for the CSA garden just in there. So it does a trick. So for the microgreens itself, those, but five days is typically what you want. 12 hours works perfect. It's not too much, it's not too little. It's like Goldilocks and Three Bears, it's just right. Let's talk about humidity. Humidity will destroy your plants and it'll cause so much mold and fungus to grow in there and destroy your microgreens completely. So your best way, well ventilated, well circulated area so for me in a grow tent, but even before when I did have a grow tent, I always had a fan on in the room to keep air circulating everywhere. So nothing's stagnant and there's no dead air sitting anywhere in the room. So I just have a little fan blowing on in there. That's it. Also on top of that, I have one small de dehumidifier in there because I want to keep the humidity between 40 and 60%. Anything higher than that, then you're going to have problems with mold. So with this, I have a little one, but I can't control the humidity with this little dehumidifier, but if you buy any larger dehumidifiers, they'll allow you to control the humidity on them. Another thing I like to have in my tent, a barometer, I can't even talk. Anyways, it's a little things telling you what the temperature is and what the humidity is. So you can see in there right now, it's a 61% humidity in there, 24 degrees Celsius. So I definitely noticed the humidity definitely goes up where the, where the plants are but also the heat because I keep the house at 19 degrees Celsius on a regular basis and it's five degrees warmer just in here. So now that those plants were underneath the light one day, I'll take them all out and water them. When it comes to watering, I just use this little water bottle that you can buy at any store, anywhere in the world. And I took the top, I drilled holes in it. So made like a little rain spout, fill out the water bottle, squeeze out the water, move on to the next tray. It's simple, it's easy. You can do whatever you want. You can fill up from your tap or just spray off from the tap. You have that, that spray nozzle attachment on it. That works great. Or if you're in an area where you don't mind getting water on the floor, use a garden hose. My wife would kill me if I used the garden hose in here. The night before harvest, I'll go through all the microgreens and pick off the shells, about 90% of them off. It's a huge pain in the butt. It takes so much time. Let me know in the comments below how you remove hulls from your sunflower seeds because I'm definitely open to options because 
I don't particularly like it, but everything goes fairly smooth with Harvest Day. You cut the greens, dump them in the sink, spin them with a salad spinner, and then throw them onto a drying rack or onto a drying mat to dry. I'll pack into my desired weights, throw in the cooler, and wait for delivery. The only thing that's a pain in the butt is the sunflower seeds, like I said. So sunflower seeds are the exact same as the rest. I cut, wash, spin, air dry. But while they're air drying, I'll go through all the plants again and remove any extra hulls that I missed. I do this because I don't want my customers to get a little black sunflower seed hull on their microgreens. I want to get the best possible quality product out there. And for me, that is removing all the hulls. And just like the rest of the greens, I pack and weigh all the sunflower shoots, store them in the cooler, and then now they're ready to go for delivery that night. The trays of spent soil are actually getting taken outside and put into the compost bin, and then they'll get dealt with in the summer once everything thaws, because as you can see, there is snow everywhere. There you go from seed to plate in just 10 days. The great thing is these microgreens go so well with everything. Let me know in the comments below how you like to use your microgreens. I hope you enjoyed this brief description on how to grow your own microgreens at home. If you want to see part one of this video, just check it out down below here. And always, if you enjoy this video, please give it a big thumbs up. I greatly appreciate it. I'll see you on the next one. Bye.